Welcome back to the channel, Hobby One Kenobi here. Well, we're going to build this Striker M1126 by AFE Club. I've built two other versions of this kit, and so I'm pretty well versed at this point how this goes. Uh, the instructions do tell you a particular order to build things, but I'm gonna show you how I go in a slightly different order. And we're going to make some modifications, so stay tuned and let's go ahead and get started. AFV Club kits are well known for having a lot of parts. Some say they're even over-engineered, uh, but I like the amount of detail having this many parts brings. Now it's time to get going. Let's go ahead and start cutting off some of the first pieces. I'm going to use Tamiya side cutters and Tamiya extra thin cement quite a bit for this build. You are going to want to make sure these pieces are cleaned up nicely and a little bit of Tamiya Thin Cement will be enough for them to adhere. Here is one of my previous builds of the Striker. If I remember correctly, this is the M1134, um, and this was a lot of fun to build. What's nice about the Strikers is that they're, they all have slightly different aspects to them. Uh, but what I wanted to point out here is that I modified the axles so that the wheels turn. None of the AFE Club Strikers, as far as I know, offer the ability for the wheels to be turned. So this is something that we need to do early on and I'm gonna show you how we achieve this. A correction, that previous vehicle was the M1128. This is the M1134. This one has a tow missile launcher on top. This one was also a lot of fun to do and as you can see I also turned the wheels, the front two wheels of the vehicle to the left. On this vehicle, I also added some cable that ran from the light to the vehicle itself, as well as made some straps for these tools. The smoke grenade launchers have been bored out to be a bit thinner, and as you can see, I added some quite a bit of weathering on this vehicle. I'm proud to say that this vehicle won a few best armors in local contests, as well as a best of show. Okay, now on to modifying the axles. Once all of our pieces have been cleaned up, I'm going to kind of figure out how I'm going to take this actuating arm off. I could use a saw, I can use an X-Acto blade, I can use clippers, and these are really the side cutters are probably gonna be the best bet. The only problem being that they're gonna take up quite a bit of plastic from one side of the axle. So clipping them off, you can see now I'm able to determine which direction or how far I would like for these wheels to move. Remember, it's only going to be the front two axles. Those are the only two that move 
left and right. So now I'm kind of gauging just how far I'm going to be able to go. And again, we're going to use the side cutter for the other arm of the axle. I want to be really careful that I don't take off too much plastic from either side. And it appears that I've cut too much off, so to repair that I'm going to use a little bit of extra thin cement, allow the plastic pieces to melt a bit, and then squeeze them together with a pair of tweezers. And this will bring it right back to its original form. I'm going to continue using the side cutters, just try to be really, really careful. Once all of the moving parts have been removed, it's now time to set the arms into their new position and then reset the bar uh, going across to in its proper place. And I'm going to use, uh, again, extra thin. This is the dark green type of Tamiya thin cement. It's not as fast drying, so I'm going to allow it to sort of puddle up and do its magic. Next we're going to need to attach these rings to the uh, struts for the wheels. And once I can get them into position I can start deciding just how far out these are going to swing. And now it looks like everything is in place, the angles are correct, and we can start now dropping in the center axle pieces. All right, now moving on to the upper hull. All right, now moving on to the upper hull area. This is where I'm going to deviate from the instructions. AFE Club asks that we start to put details on this upper hull and put quite a bit of them um, and then only later start to attach the upper and lower hulls. I, I don't like working that way. What I like to do is get all of the things that need to go on the inside of the upper hull, namely these periscopes. Once those are in place, I will then go ahead and put the hull pieces together. There are not any fit issues when you're putting the hull pieces together, so don't worry about that. But for me, I like to have the body of the vehicle together and then put all of the smaller details on top of that. This way I can avoid potentially breaking very delicate pieces. For each of the AFE Club strikers I have built, I like using these anti-reflection stickers. These are going to go on the periscopes and look really, really fantastic once they're on the vehicle. Again, even though the AFE Club instructions say to add these parts later, I'm really going to focus on putting the hull pieces together. And this also includes the back door of the vehicle.
So for these vehicles, I do have a couple of sources. And this particular book is really incredible. It shows a lot of great photographs of the vehicle in action, and then also some really nice close-up shots of not only the exterior, but the interior as well. Now what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that there is supposed to be a seam at the frame of the door of the back of the vehicle. Uh, whether there is a seam, it looks like there is a seam. So this means I'm not going to fill it. And in fact, as I glue the frame, I'm going to be careful not to fill it too much um, when I am applying the extra thin cement. As you know, Tamiya Extra Thin really melts the plastic and that's how it adheres. Uh, it's not necessarily a cement all by itself. It requires the pieces of plastic in order for it to work. And if we squeeze the pieces together, the melted plastic begins to ooze out into the seam. And this can be really great for many reasons. You know, this can be great actually for certain parts of vehicles, but where we do want to seem to be shown, we want to be really, really careful not to let too much ooze out. It is so important to be able to dry fit pieces and really take the time to do that. Um, and then if something's not fitting right, try to figure it out, sand things down, add more plastic, whatever you need to do to get it to fit right. It's these initial construction stages that I think uh, warrant a lot, of, a lot of care and a lot of patience. Uh, because I don't care how well you paint a vehicle or how well you weather a vehicle. If the door frame does not look like it's supposed to be, if, if it's not aligned properly, uh, that's going to stick out like a sore thumb and no amount of weathering can really cover that up. So take time with construction and get used to dry fitting your parts. Okay, now we're going to start working off some of the pin marks that you find on the inside of these side racks. These side racks come in uh, a couple of different pieces, so it's good to just take care of them now. This is not something you want to deal with when everything is on the vehicle.
There is one of these little attachment points that needs to be removed, and I did that nicely with a little chisel. I recommend getting a set of chisels. They're, they've come in real handy uh, lately for my models. As you can see here, the string wasn't really taut. So one way that I fixed it was to simply take the string and re effectively retighten it by twisting it in one direction. And this actually allowed the string to tighten up really nicely. All right, so having built quite a few strikers, I've always noticed this drip pan uh, being held in these side racks, and I really wanted to scratch build my own. I asked for help on the following uh, Facebook pages and got a lot of great pictures from people showing me exactly what this drip pan looks like. And to replicate it, I decided to take some of these, I guess these are tattoo ink containers and I use them for glue occasionally. And I just took one that was the right size and sort of cut off the flap on one side. And that gave me a kind of a nice starting place for this drip pan. So then I secured some plastic on the other side and started to work that down and then added some details, um, some extra pieces of plastic and a little bit of brass rod for the handle. Next, I decided to put that sort of ribbing effect all around and I did that with small pieces of styrene rod, then sprayed the whole thing with some black primer, painted up the uh, little handle, silver as you see in the photos, and here it is. Later I will attach this to the vehicle. Next I'm going to show you uh, one of the techniques to making nice smoke grenades for the vehicle. Uh, in the previous builds I simply bored out the plastic, but this time I decided I was going to use some aluminum rod for this purpose. Uh, I'm using an X-Acto knife, some sanding sticks, uh, and the Tamiya Electric Handy Drill, as well as some files. What I do is I throw the file right into the Tamiya Electric Handy Drill and just start scraping away the inside. The nice thing with working with aluminum is that it's fairly soft, so very easy to sort of cut these pieces off. And once they're glued onto the model, they get a little bit of a primer, and as you see, can see, they look pretty good.
Now it's time to make a base for the model. Uh, for this, I'm going to use what's called XPS. This is essentially ins insulation foam. Uh, I found this at Home Depot. And as you can see, I carved out a section to sort of replicate uh, a road on a hill. And it's going to be glued with this Gorilla adhesive, uh, construction adhesive. And I'm just going to squeeze a good amount on this piece and spread it around with a popsicle stick and then place it into these toothpicks. Once the section has dried, uh, I will apply sculpt mold to the XPS foam. sculpt mold uh, dries pr fairly quickly and uh, is pretty hard, so this is going to create a nice uh, surface for the road as well as the terrain. For the terrain and road texture, I'm going to use this AK uh, terrain product and I'm going to apply it with this foam brush. To prevent the AK product from going onto the, wood, the wooden edges, to prevent the AK product from going on the wooden edges of the base, I decided to tape the area off. This way I could work a little bit more uh, haphazardly, if you will, without, without ruining the base. On a side note, I am careful to not necessarily call this a diorama. I know that's a term that we pretty much use for anything that is a base, uh, but I come from the world of dioramas from the masters like Shepard Payne and Francois Verlinden, and, and this just is not a term that is usually used. Uh, diorama specifically, in the way that I like to use it, uh, specifically refers to a scene that is being created where there is something happening, there is a story being told. And though one could infer a story from a vehicle being on a dirt road, I am not exactly telling a story. I'm just simply showing the vehicle in its in one of its natural states. Okay, so once the AK product has dried, here's sort of the, how it looks. And now I'm going to go over with some sandpaper because what I want to do is show a little bit of a difference between the dirt on the hill and uh, the sort of quasi-dirt road. The sandpaper is doing a good job of bringing down some of the uh, texture and it's starting to, to look like a road. In fact, the colors are already starting to look like a bit like a road, but this will all be painted over. Next, I'm going to start inserting some rocks into the texture.
and the space between the little hill and the road itself um, I is going to receive some rocks. I decided to shape it so that it's going to create a little bit of a of a creek, a little bit of a waterway. The look I'm going for on this particular base is one that is depicting an area that has just rained only an hour ago and the rain is has built up into puddles and along the vehicle I'm also going to add some water spots. So now I'm applying this gra a gravel and sand fixer and this is going to help secure these rocks and all of the many little pebbles in place.
And finally, we're adding some water streaks. And these have, are again with this sort of glossy black mixture that I created. I'm looking for places where water may have collected and started to run. And again, this is depicting a vehicle that has been dr starting to dry. So I'm not going to go crazy with the water. Just some obvious places where the water had collected. And there you have it. Here is the model on its base. I think it looks pretty good. The wheels have been turned to give it a little bit more realism. This is, was a lot of fun to do, and thank you so much for following along. Uh, please do hit subscribe and like the video if you did enjoy this build, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.